Hi, welcome to I Educator. This is CJ Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. Today, we will discuss chapter four. And chapter four is all about the foundation of management accountants. Now, in any organization, a system is necessary to make its operations orderly and consistent with business ethical standards. Orderly actions as a result of a system could either make the work lighter, create harmonious working conditions, and professionalize one's approach in business dealings. And so for this matter, it is of paramount importance for business organizations to properly observe and or implement accounting system. So what is meant by accounting system? Accounting system has been defined as a set of manual of methods and procedures to establish control in gathering business transactions, recording them, classifying them, summarizing them, and then submitting financial information for management decision. This is according to Business Dictionary 2015. Now in short, this set of manual of methods and procedures implies that financial information can be relied upon and can be verified. Now the second key area that I want to highlight today that would be the objectives of accounting system and today I will be highlighting two objectives. So the first objective is to inform the users of financial statement about the past operating performance of the business and to guide them for further business performance. Now what does this objective mean? Now, having the information about the past operating performance of the business would actually help us track the income and spending of our company. Now, comparing the two gives us a snapshot of the company's profits or losses. Although there are often other factors which determine whether our company is successful. For example, a month showing a loss is totally understandable if and only if we purchased a large piece of equipment that month, if that makes sense, right? Now, checking where the money is coming from and where it's going is imperative in order to create financial statements. And these consolidated pieces of information can then be evaluated and used to make further decisions such as purchasing, advertising, or the need to scale back in a particular area. On the other hand, accurate reports are critical to our ability to make business decisions. One of the primary qualities of accounting information is the principle of faithful representation. And so going back to our first objective, as users of financial statements, we want to know about the past operating performance of the business. The information presented in financial statements should be truthful and free from error because accurate information will allow us to examine every aspect of our income and expenditures at a glance and know that our data is reflecting a true picture of our current financial situation. Now, for example, if our overall profit and loss statement shows a profit, but one department is consistently running at a loss, our company then isn't performing at peak efficiency. This is because our cost of goods sold should be fairly consistent number. When it starts to rise, we need to know it immediately and so we can change our purchasing habit. So that is what is meant by objective number one. Now the second objective of accounting system is to provide 
financial information in an understandable manner that is useful in the decision-making processes of the investors and creditors. Now, whether our accounting system is simple or complex, it must meet certain objectives to keep our business running smoothly. And also, we cannot deny the fact as well that it's quite difficult to make informed business decisions without accurate financial data that help us see where we are, where we've been, and the trends that may determine where we're headed. Now, this being said, the objective of an accounting information system should be to provide information to decision makers in a format that's easy to understand. And the next key area that I want to give emphasis today would be the accounting manual. Remember, part of the accounting system is the accounting manual, correct? So what is meant then by accounting manual? When we say accounting manual, this is a system that will guide the accounting personnel in the proper treatment of every transaction so that there will be consistency in the application of all transactions. And the accounting manual contains the following information. First, we have charts of accounts. Second, financial reports to be generated. Third, book of accounts. Fourth, company policies and procedures. And finally, we have duties and responsibilities of accounting personnel. Now, let me discuss to you first chart of accounts. So what is meant by chart of accounts? When we say chart of accounts, this refers to a listing of all account titles that the business will use. Now, there are three types of chart of accounts. First, we have asset accounts. Second, we have liability accounts. And third, we have capital accounts. And capital accounts has four components. First, we have capital accounts. Second, withdrawal account. Next, revenue account. And finally, we have expense account. When we say asset accounts, take note that assets are generally what a business owns and is therefore defined as resources controlled by the entity as a result of past transaction and events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. This is according to Valix, Peralta, and Valix of 2009. On the other hand, if we see liability account, remember, Liabilities are generally what a business owes and is therefore defined as present obligation of an entity arising from past transactions or events. The settlement of liabilities is normally expected to result as an outflow from the entity resources embodying economic benefits. And this is still according to Valix, Peralta Valix 2009. And finally, when we say capital accounts, capital account is generally the residual interest and it has four components. First, we have capital accounts. Next, withdrawal. Third, revenue account, and lastly, expense account. Now, what's the difference uh, between them? When we say capital account, this refers to the investment of the owner. Again, refers to the investment of the company's owner. When we say withdrawal account, this is the temporary withdrawal account of the owner, normally used in single proprietorship and partnership businesses. On the other hand, revenue account, uh, this is the account for the income of the company. And finally, we have expense account. And obviously, this is the account for the expenses of the company. Now that we already have an idea about what these accounts really are, 
The next thing I'm going to be showing you would be examples of each type of account in order for us to better understand them. Now, let me start to you with the asset account. Okay, under asset account, we have cash and cash is a generic account. Some companies that engage in simple transactions usually use this account, which could either be on hand or in the bank. However, for a company to be more effective in directing its business, cash can be made more specific. And therefore, the following are the specific names of cash used both in academic field as well as in the industry. So the first specific name of cash is what we call cash on hand. Cash on hand denotes money or cash substitutes representing the collection of the company awaiting deposit to the company's depository bank the following banking day. Or if the company has collection on non-banking day, it has no choice but to wait for the next banking day. Another specific name of cash is cash in bank. It denotes to the money of the company that is in the bank awaiting payment. Now, if, if some companies maintain several bank accounts, an additional description representing the name of the bank appears. And because of this, it is highly suggested that when you use the account in the journal entry, you have to include the name of the bank. For example, ABC Corporation, Metro Bank, or ABC Corporation, BPI, or ABC Corporation, BDO. Okay, that's an example of how. And next we have cash in fund. It denotes money placed in a specific fund for a specific purpose. Now, one example for this is the petty cash fund. This is a fund intended to pay petty expenses. This is very helpful, especially that a company cannot issue a check for small expenses, correct? Uh, for example, you ask your employee to buy office supplies. Now, in buying office supplies, your employee spends cash for the jeepney fare, and it obviously means that we cannot issue a check as payment to the jeepney driver, if that makes sense, right? Now, therefore, we can get cash from the petty cash fund. And lastly, we have cash equivalent. Cash equivalent refers to short-term investment made by the company. It is generally accepted that only accounts under three months maturity will be considered on this account. Now, another type of asset account or another example under asset account rather, that would be accounts receivable. And this refers to customers' account arising from selling activities. This account to a trade account receivable. This usually occurs if your customers didn't buy on cash. Instead, they bought your products on credit. And so for this matter, you have receivables from your customers. Another asset account is notes receivable. This refers to accounts receivable or collectible of the company. However, this is supported by a promissory note. Next, we have inventory. An inventory refers to the merchandise of the company intended for sale in the course of its business operations. This is also sometimes called as merchandise inventory. Another asset account that we have that would be prepayments. These are the advance payments made by the company. For example, the company paid rent in advance for one year. The advance payment is called prepaid rent expense. If we paid in advance for advertising expense, then we call it as prepaid advertising expense, okay? So next we have land, and this refers to the land owned by the company 
that is being used in business. And we need to take note as well that land is the only asset that will not depreciate. Again, this is the only asset that will not depreciate because its usage is infinite or endless. Another asset account, we have building. And this refers to the infrastructure owned by the company that is being used in the business. Next, we have furniture and fixtures. These refer to the movable furniture and fixtures that have no permanent connection to the structure of the building. Examples of furniture and fixtures, we have chairs, tables, air conditioners, cabinets, electric fans, desks, bookcases, partitions, and a lot more. These are just some of the many examples under furniture and fixtures accounts. Next, we have office equipment. Uh, office equipment, these are long-term assets reported on the balance sheet under the heading of property, plant, and equipment. Included in this account would be computer, typewriter, fax machine, photocopier, telephone units, store equipment, etc. Okay. And lastly, we have delivery equipment. These are, or this is the account rather, that is used instead of transportation equipment sometimes. And next uh, that we have, next type of chart account that would be liability account. And under liability account, we have accounts payable and notes payable. Now when we say accounts payable, it represents the liability account of the company arising from purchase of merchandise that is intended for use. On the other hand, notes payable represents a liability account supported by a promissory note issued by the company. And the last type of chart of account, we have capital accounts. And remember, this is divided into four components. We have capital, withdrawal, revenue, and expense. Now, if we say capital account, this refers to the investment of the owner. Example, X capital. Now this refers to the capital account of the owner. And the letter X represents the name of the owner. In academic problem, whenever the name of the owner is given in, then you should replace X with the name of the owner as stated in the academic problem. Supposing the name of our owner is John Smith. So therefore, uh, when you do the accounting or the preparation of journal entry, so you should write John Smith capital, okay? You replace X with the name of the owner, John Smith. Again, John Smith capital. Next is withdrawal account. This is the temporary withdrawal account of the owner. Example, um, X withdrawal. So similar to capital account, whenever the name of the owner is given in an academic problem, we should use the name of the owner instead of the letter, letter X. So supposing the owner made a withdrawal so the name of the owner is John Smith. So therefore, we write John Smith with Joel. So we replace X with the name of the owner. And another component of capital account is revenue account. And revenue account refers to the account for the income of the company. Now, examples of revenue account, we have service income, interest income, sales, sales discount, sales returns, and sales allowances. And another, lastly, we have expense account. When we see expense account, this is the account for the expenses of the company. And the examples for these 
will be discussed later on. Okay, let us discuss first the examples or the different account names under revenue accounts. So let me discuss first what a service income is. Now, when we say service income, this type of account is usually used by companies, especially those who render services in order to earn an income. So in short, we can only use this account name, especially if the site of the business is a service industry. Examples of this uh, type are beauty parlors or beauty salons, barber shops, repair shops. So if you own businesses like this, then the first term or the first account name that should be appearing on your income statement, that should be service income, okay? Because your business is into business type of industry. Okay, second, we have interest income. This type of revenue account is normally used whenever company's income is earned out of lending its money or depositing money with a banking institution. Now, normally the examples under interest income uh, type of revenue account are the banking institutions because they normally lend their money to the companies. And another type of account under revenue account that would be sales. This is a revenue account for merchandising type of business organization that is used in selling merchandise. And when we say sales discount, it represents cash discount given to customers for settling their accounts on time. So if you're the customer and you have um, payables and you settle your accounts on time, then normally you will be given by the seller with a sales discount, okay? Next, we have sales returns. It represents actual returns made by the customers due to wrong delivery, wrong shipment, or defective merchandise. Now, remember that even companies, they are not perfect. So sometimes they commit errors, they deliver the wrong products, or uh, there is a wrong shipment, or may it be that they deliver a defective product. And once this is received by the customer, so being you as a customer and you receive a defective product, you return the product to the store where you bought it. So that is what we call sales return. And next we have sales allowances. It represents no actual returns, but to an allowance given instead for the defective merchandise delivered. And on the other hand, under expense accounts, we have um, 11. I have cited 11 account names under expense account. And these are the following. First, we have purchases. These are merchandise purchases which are intended for sale. And second, we have purchase discount. It is a sales discount or it is a discount rather given by merchandisers when you pay your liabilities on time. Next, we have purchase returns. These are actual returns of merchandise you return to your supplier due to wrong delivery, wrong shipment, or defective merchandise. Next, we have purchase allowance. These are the allowances given by the supplier representing reduction of price for purchase merchandise due to defects. Next, we have salaries and wages. And salaries and wages expense represents the labor payments to employees of the company. And next, we have employee benefits. These uh, represent the labor payments to the employees other than the basic payments that are highly discretionary on the part of the employer. So examples of employee benefits, we have bonuses, we have uniforms, meal allowances, your 13th month pay, and also your vacation and sick leave benefits. Okay, so these are just some of the many examples under employee benefits. Next, we have office supplies expense. It represents various office supplies used by the office like coupon bonds, pencils, ballpoint pen, 
papers, paper clips, etc. Another expense that we have that would be utilities expense, and these are expenses arising from your light or electricity. You have your water bills and telephone bills. And rent expense, on the other hand, this refers to the rental expenses of the business. Sometimes companies uh, don't own their own land, so they have to rent a land, or they don't own their own machine, so they have to rent a machine. So these are our examples of rental expenses of the company. Next is advertising expense. These are the cost of promotion and advertising the products of the business for the purpose of improving its sales performance. And lastly, we have insurance expense. These represent fire and burglary insurance of various assets of the business. So another content of the accounting manual is financial reports to be generated. So what are usually the financial statements that are generated by the company? So I have cited uh, six different financial statements. First, we have income statement. Second, we have statement of comprehensive income. Third, we have statement of changes in owner's equity. Fourth, statement of financial condition. Fifth, we have statement of cash flows. And lastly, we have notes to financial statements. So let me discuss to you first uh, the very first financial statement that should be generated by the company. So when we say income statement, uh, this is the statement that shows the results of the operation. And there are only two results of the operation. First, the company makes a profit. And second, the company incurs a loss. If the company makes a profit, usually the resulting value is positive. And the resulting value can only be positive if and only if your revenues are higher than your expenses. On the other hand, if the company incurs a loss, then normally the resulting value is negative. And it can only be negative if and only if your revenues are lower than your expenses. So in generating a financial statement, you should start with the company's name. So in this example that we have, our company's name is Welch and Graham, Attorneys at Law, okay? So next thing that we need to do is to state the name of the statement. So in this case, we have income statement. And third, that would be the period or the duration of the statement. So in this case, you have for the year ended December 31st, 2017. Now the word for the year or for a period means that the statement contains figures that transpired only during the period of the statement date. Okay, another statement or financial statement that we have is what we call statement of comprehensive income. Now, the only difference of this and the statement of income or the income statement is that statement of comprehensive income will show not only the result of the entity's operation, but also other items like forex or foreign exchange translation gains and losses. Now, as you can notice, uh, there are three additional information shown in our comprehensive income statement. So it shows the foreign currency translation adjustment, pension and post-retirement uh, post liability adjustments, Okay, so these are some of the information that is shown as well in the statement of comprehensive income. The next statement is what we call statement of changes in owner's equity. So what do we mean by this? 
This is the statement that will show the changes that took place in the equity section during the month or during the year, rather. So in this case, um, the owner's name is M. Santos, followed by the name of the statement, which is Statement of Changes in Owner's Equity. And second, we have for the year ended or the duration or the period for the year ended December 31st, 2011. So as you can notice in the first section of the Statement of Changes in Owner's Equity, it shows us the owner's equity beginning. So the owner's equity beginning is zero. So we don't have any um, capital or owner's equity beginning. So next we have, we are seeing investments during the year. And in this case, uh, the company invested 300,000 uh, pesos. Next we have net income for the year. We have 51,414 pesos for a total of 351,414 pesos. So this will be deducted by the withdrawals of 25,000 pesos because we will assume that M. Santos made a withdrawal okay, during this year or during this period. So the net increase in owner's equity, you have 326,414 pesos. And so for this matter, this will also be the amount that will be considered as your ending capital or owner's equity. Okay, another statement that we have, that would be statement of financial condition. This is the statement that will show the real condition of the business. This is the standard name of the statement and the alternative name is the balance sheet. So as you can notice with our example, the first that should be appearing once we generate the statement, that would be the company names. So in this case, our company's name is Business Consulting Company, followed by the name of the statement. So we have balance sheet. And lastly, we have the period or the duration. So we have as of December 31st, 2015. Now the word as of means that the statement contains cumulative figures from the start of the business commercial operation up to the present statement dates. Now in balance sheet, there are three important keywords that we should always remember. First, we have assets. Second, we have liabilities. And lastly, we have owner's equity or stockholder's equity. Now, in this statement, we should be using the accounting equation. And that would be your assets should be equal to the sum of your liabilities and owner's equity. So as you can see in the left corner of your statement, your total assets is $101,000. And on the right corner, the sum of your liabilities and stockholders' equity is also $101,000. Again, they should be equal. Okay, next we have statement of cash flows. And when we say statement of cash flows, it is the statement that will show the sources and uses of cash during the period it is reported. When we say sources of cash, we will be asking ourselves, um, where do we source our cash? Did we borrow money from the bank or any other financial institutions? Or did we invest actual money, okay? Or cash in our company or any other sources? And also aside from sources, it will also show the uses of cash. So meaning to say the outflows of your cash. Did we buy some equipment? Or did we purchase another 
raw materials in bulk, and so on and so forth. Now, if we talk about statement of cash flows, there are three activities that you, we should be reminded of. Okay, first, we have the operating activities. Second, we have investing activities. And lastly, we have financing activities. So as you can notice, so we don't have any investing activities, it's zero. And the only financing activities that we have is that the owner of the company invested some sort of $2,000 in the business so therefore your statement of cash flows specifically on march 31st that would be two thousand one hundred dollars or twenty one hundred dollars okay so the next content of manual accounting or accounting manual rather that will be the books of accounts the business will use now, as you can notice, we have two different books that are used by businesses. First, we have the journal, and second, we have the ledger. Now, what's the difference between the two? When we say journal book, this is considered as the book of original entry because business transactions are first entered here. Now, examples of journal are general journal and special journal. When we say general journal, if the company is a small scale company and has only one accounting staff, he normally maintains general journal, meaning all transactions are confined in just one book. On the other hand, if we say special journal, as your business grows, there will be more transactions that will be processed by several accounting personnel. There will also be a need for more specialized books. And for this reason, the special journal is created. And examples of special journals are sales journal, purchase journal, cash receipt journal, and cash payment journal. If we see sales journal, it contains transactions related to sales on account only. On the other hand, purchase journal contains transactions related to purchases on account only. When we say cash receipt journal, it contains transactions related to all receipts of the company, whether trade or non-trade. And lastly, when we say cash payment journal, it contains transactions related to all payments of the company, whether trade or non-trade. Okay, so these are the four types of special journal. And the second book that is normally used by businesses, that would be the ledger. If your journal is considered to be as the book of original entry, being this is where your transactions are first entered, then your ledger is the book of final entry. Transactions are entered into this book for the last time. And this is the reason why it is called as the book of final entry. So after the ledger, there will be no more recording and report generation that will follow. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the latest updates. Thank you.